الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى الحمد لله على كل حال ونعوذ بالله من حال اهل النار اللهم صل على محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد كلما ذكره الذاكرون وصل على سيدنا محمد كلما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير بك نستعين يا فتاح اللهم اجعلنا اليك اللهم اجعلنا دعاء اليك والى رسولك اللهم علمنا الكتاب والحكمه وفقهنا في الدين ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واذكر في الكتاب اسماعيل انه كان صادق الوعد وكان رسولا وكان رسولا وكان رسولا ونبيا صدق الله العلي العظيم حاضرين الكرام ان ربل اسمبلي تدي I want to speak about something or some things which have crept into this ummah which are very very detestable some bad traits and some bad qualities <clears throat> one of these qualities is not keeping a promise and not keeping one's word that is so detestable If a Muslim tells you to run, you should be able to run. But unfortunately, sometimes when a Muslim tells you to run, it's better you stand up. Not trustworthy, word not good. A person tells you something and doesn't keep his word. I will meet you tomorrow. I will come tomorrow. We'll meet at so and so place. I promise this or I give you my word and then the time comes and he is not there he doesn't show up and we live in an age of technology that if he cannot make it then he can call and he can say that I am late or so and so is the case but not leave a person hung up waiting on him and he doesn't show up We need to start keeping our word. Our word should be solid like gold. Wow. Our word should be solid like gold. <coughs> In Mishkat there's a hadith which is muttafaq alay by Imam Al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim. The hadith is from Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه عن ابي هريره رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين حضره عبد الله ابو هريره رضي الله تعالى عنه سدت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سد آية المنافق ثلاث that the signs of a hypocrite are three another riwayat four 
the signs of a monafic, the signs of a hypocrite are three. So whatever these three signs are, we should try our best that these signs are not within us. And if they are in us, we should try to eradicate them because these are traits of hypocrisy and these are not traits of belief. And if someone has these three qualities in him or the four qualities in him, then we cannot really call him a monafiki hakiki because a monafik, a hakiki, a true real monafik is that one who outwardly pretends and shows Islam, but inwardly there's kufr in his heart. And we don't know that. In the time of the Prophet wasallam, he was informed who are the hypocrites. And he did not even make that list public knowledge. Hudayfa, sahibul asrar keep up the secrets he knew the list of the names of the hypocrites but if these qualities are present in a person then he can be termed as a al monafikul majazi he's a figurative hypocrite not the real one a hypocrite in the sense that actions and words don't mesh he says something, he does something else. He's saying one thing and he's doing something else. Like when Allah says, Lima takuluna ma la tafalun. Why do you say that which you don't do? It's a form of hypocrisy. Anyhow, subhanallah, let's listen to these three qualities. And we should try to get rid of them if they are within us. The Prophet said, when he speaks, he lies. My God, lying is such a bad, bad, bad thing. Lying is such a bad thing. In Bukhari, in Bukhari Sharif, the Prophet said, Inna rajula la yasduku. That a man speaks the truth and he speaks the truth and he speaks the truth Hatta yakuna indallahi siddiqa, until he becomes a siddiq a very truthful person in the sight of Allah and you know what truth does the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as-siddiqu yunji well, kathibu yuhlik. That truth will set you free. Truth will make you victorious. Well, kathib yuhlik and falsehood and lies will destroy you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kulil haqqa. Walau kana murra. Say the truth, even though it is bitter. And we have yaqeen. And we have belief in this as believers that we should and we must speak the truth. There are some occasions when a person can twist things a bit, but we will not go into that. But basically, truth, lover of truth. When Islam is attacked, Muslims are attacked, at the time of jihad, like the hadith of the Qatl of Qad ibn Ashraf, a person is allowed to say something, to deceive the enemy. It's jihad and war in jihad. Sometimes a person can tell a little lie to bring about peace between two Muslim brothers. They're not speaking. So he goes to one of them and he says, you're not speaking to Adam, but you know what? Adam loves you so much and he always has all these good things to say about you to make peace. It's less of the two evils. And sometimes when the fitna can be so big with, our, with your wife, sometimes you could speak a little lie to save a bigger fitna. But this is not a license or a green light they start lying to their wives. Ma'adwala, don't misunderstand. There are certain little exceptions when a person 
can twist things a bit but understand it and don't go beyond that it's not a green light to just go about lying and lying and lying even to one's wife don't misunderstand me Allah. but the Prophet ﷺ said in the rajula la yastuku that a man begins to speak the truth speak the truth hatta yakuna in the law he siddiqa until he becomes in the sight of Allah a siddiq a very truthful person and the Prophet ﷺ said as siddiqu yunji truth is going to set you free it will make you victorious wal kadibu yuhlik and lies will destroy you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us kunu ma sadiqeen be with the truthful ones and then on the on the flip side on the flip side of the coin the prophet alayhi salam said wa inna rajula la yakdhib Indeed, a man begins to lie and to lie and to lie. Hatta yuktaba in Allahi kazaba until he is written in the sight of Allah as a kazab, as a great liar, a great liar. You know, we get dreams. We all get dreams, and dreams are so important for a Muslim because in Bukhari there is a hadith. That the Prophet وسلم, said that dreams, true dreams, a ru'ya to saliha, a pious dream, is one part of 46 parts of prophethood. Alama Ibn Sirin, who is an authority on dreams, who wrote the dictionary of dreams, who is a master in tabiru ru'ya, just as how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this ni'mat of interpretation of dreams to prophet yusuf alayhi salam when the two people in prison told him their dreams and exactly as how he interpreted it came just like that clear as daylight so to our prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam wow what ni'am what gifts allah bestowed upon him alama ibn sirin was also blessed with the interpretation of dreams and he said that the more truthful you become, the more truthful your dreams will be. And the more false you are, the more false your dreams will be. Anyhow, this quality of lying is detestable, detestable. It is not the shan of a believer. So, Imam Bukhari mentions, that Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ayatul munafiq thalath the signs of a hypocrite are three and Imam Muslim was a Muslim in the narration of Muslim he has increased this part from the Rasul alayhi wa sallam wa in soma wa salla even though he fasts and performs salat wa za'ama annahu muslim and he claims to be a Muslim, yet he has qualities of hypocrisy within him. When he speaks, he lies. When he makes a promise, when he gives his word, he doesn't keep it. He goes against that. He breaks his promise. And when he's entrusted, he betrays that trust. He does qiyanat. And in another riwayat, wa qasama, which is the fourth quality, which is also in another riwayat, wa qasama, when he argues or disputes with someone, fajara, he goes overboard. He goes beyond. A dispute has taken place, but wow, where has he gone? He has gone, he has made it a personal attack on the person, attacking him, his character, his family members, his mother. He goes overboard. So the Prophet wasallam said three qualities. Either haddatha, when he speaks, kathaba, he lies, he lies. Wa idha wada, aklafa, when he gives a promise, when he gives his word, he breaks it. وَإِذَا تُمِنَا قَانَا 
when he's entrusted with a trust, then he doesn't keep that amanat. He betrays that trust. Let's look into the Holy Quran for an example for you and me that should be there for the rest of our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, it's in Surah Maryam, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Wadhkur fil kitab Ismail Allah says remember O oh my prophet remember and relate the story which is within the book which is in this Quran about Ismail alayhi salatu was salam remember that and relate it to your ummah and you also to remember and relate it because we are all naibs we are all deputies of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that we have been ordered to do tablid and to convey the message of the Quran and Islam to the whole of mankind wadhkur fil kitabi Ismail remember the story of Ismail who was Ismail he was the firstborn of Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet Abraham. In the Bible, which is twisted, which has been adulterated, they mention that Ishaq, Isaac, as being the firstborn, which is incorrect. The firstborn of Prophet Abraham, Ibrahim, is Prophet Ismail, Ishmael, Ismail, ala nabina wa alayhi salatu was salam. So Allah says, tell the story, remember it, and tell it to your people, and let the whole world know about Ismail. What about him? What about Ismail? What could fil kitabi Ismail? What about him? Innahu kana sadiq al wad. He was very truthful to his word. He was truthful to his promise. And until the day of Qiyamah, Everyone, every Muslim will read this verse when they read Quran. Innahu kana sadiq al wad. He was sadiq. He was truthful to his word and his promise. In the tafsir of Jalalain, it is mentioned, Lam yaid shay'an illa wa He never promised anything or gave his word on anything except that he fulfilled it. In the hashi of Jalalain, on under the tafsir of this ayah, one of the great muhaddithin, Ibn Abi Hatim, rahmatullahi, he reports and he narrates, and Sufyan Thawri, from our, one of our great scholars of the past, of the Tabi'een, Sufyan Thawri, great muhaddith, a great faqih, a great wali of Allah, Sufyan al Thawri, says, Balagani, he says, it has reached me, it has reached me, Anna Ismaila, ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam, wa sahiban lahu ataya qariya. That once Prophet Ismail and a friend of his were traveling and they came to a village. فَقَالَ لَهُ صَاحِبُهُ His friend, his companion said to him, he says, hear what? إِمَّا an ajlisa. It's either I sit and remain here, فَتَدْكُلَ And then you will go and enter the city, وَتَشْتَرِيَ تَعَامًا زَادَنَا And you will purchase food, which will be our provisions and our stock. Aw or imma an adkula fa akfiya kazalika or either I enter and see about all of that and I will suffice you for that and you remain here. Ismail alayhi salatu was salam said Balid kul anta says you enter, you go. Balid kul anta wana ajlisu huna and I will sit here waiting on you. So it was agreed 
his friend entered Fadakala, he entered the Korea, the village. After entering, he got caught up inside there, some manasia, and then he forgot about Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. Walam yakruj. So he entered Fadakala, some manasia. As a result of his nisyan, Falam Yakruj, he didn't come out. Ismail alayhi salatu was salam waited there. Sufyan al-Thawri alayhi rahma says, Faqama Ismailu makanahu. Ismail alayhi salatu was salam stayed in that place and waited there. Famarra bil hawli min dhalik al yawm. He passed one year, Allahu Akbar, he passed one year in that place. He would have made camp. He would have stayed there. He passed one year in that place, waiting on his friend. So one day, his friend came out of the city. And his friend passed by him. And he said, wow. He said, anta hahuna? You, oh my God, you are still here until this time? Ismail alayhi salatu was salam said, Alam akullak, did I not say to you, La abrah, that I will not, I will not leave here, La abrahu, hatta tajia, until you come, until you return, did I not say that? And then Sufyan al-Thawri, he said, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ Ismail." Remember in the book, the story about Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ Indeed, he was truthful to his promise. وَكَانَ رَسُولًا نَبِيًّا He was a Rasul and a Nabi. He was a Rasul to the Jurhum people, that clan. When Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam left his mother Hajra and the baby Ismail in Mecca, which had nothing and no water, and then eventually the Zamzam came forth, the clan, the Jurhum, who were the Arabs of Yemen, they passed by and with the permission of Hajra alayhi salatu was salam, they were allowed to use the water and they settled there. They settled in the vicinity of that water, the Zamzam in Mecca. And eventually they married Ismail to one of their daughters. And Allah sent him as a Rasul to his calm. So, وَكَانَ رَسُولًا أَيْ إِلَى جُرْهُمْ To the people of Jurhum, he was also a Nabi. وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَحْلَهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ and he used to command his people. Ahlahu here means his kaum. He used to command his people with salah, with prayer, and with zakat. And he was one whom his Lord was well pleased with. Subhanallah. Look at that. Imagine he is staying for one year because he gave his word. This should, this should encourage us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, of learning to speak the truth and to keep our word. When we give our word, our word is our, it is our, our faith, it is our deen. The Prophet wasallam said, La imana liman la amana talahu. There is no iman, there is no faith and belief for the one who has no trustworthiness with respect to one's nafs. He is not trustworthy with respect to your life, with your nafs, with your wealth, with your family. He is not trustworthy. You are not safe from him. He has no amanat. He has no trustworthiness. Fin nafsi wal mali wal ahli then what type of faith he has? But our scholars have mentioned, you don't call him a kafir. Muslims must know that they should not, for small, simple reasons, 
label one another as a kafir. Do not do that. Ma'adhallah. So what the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah have said, what the hadith means is that his iman is lacking. He doesn't have kamalul iman, completion of iman, good iman, perfect iman. His iman is weak. La imana. So the nafi and the negation here is negation of kamal and perfection. La imana, there is no iman. Liman la amana, who doesn't have trustworthiness. Wala dina, and what religion a man has? What Islam he has? Liman la ahdalahu, who has no ahad, who doesn't keep his word, his promise, his covenant, his agreement, whose word is not good. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it's a simple lesson that Islam is not just about performance of Hajj and fasting in the month of Ramadan that is all that all falls under hukukullah the rights of Allah but there is another very important section of rights known as hukukul ibad the rights that we owe to creatures and it's become very common amongst Muslims that we lie we don't keep our word we break, break a promise and whenever we are entrusted with something sometimes we betray that trust and sometimes we're either qasama, fajara when we have a dispute with somebody we don't keep it within the boundary of a debate and dispute no we go overboard ma'adhallah and reflect upon Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam from whom came from whose lineage came Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the Arabs may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit you and me that we can develop these qualities and these traits within us that we will learn to speak the truth and have perfect iman in the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that as yunji that truth is going to make you victorious while kathibu yuhlik and lies will destroy you so let's not be amongst those either haddatha kathaba when he speaks he lies wa idha wada aqlafa when he gives a promise he breaks it wa idha tumina qana and when he's entrusted with something he betrays that trust wa akhiru dawana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alamin